Hi everyone, welcome to World Makers. Lisa, it's great to have you here. We have Lisa Shaw from Bravo, and I have so many questions to ask you. One question I wanted to ask you is, you have such an interesting background because you started in the news side on NBC, and now you're doing digital with Bravo, which we'll talk about, but that's an interesting migration. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because Well, it was just a career thing that was not necessarily my own choice. It happened around six years ago. I absolutely loved the news, and I thought that I was going to spend the rest of my career there. And then, you know, things happen. I ended up switching into Bravo, which was at the at that time was a you know very small uh, cable entertainment network that has really grown. And I happened to be at sort of the bottom of the hockey stick of growth. And news was always a very steady thing. So to be a part of an organization which is having this phenomenal growth, and to really see all the pieces and parts, and really, you know, the the our leader Lawrence Lasnik and Francis Barrick, you really have to own the business. They they said to me, you know, I came at a time that digital was nothing. It was basically a bunch of you know sort of leftover things on the the cutting room floor, and they gave us the leftovers, and that's what we put up on the website. So to watch that growth and and be a part of it has been really an exciting thing. I'd love to hear you talk about content because a lot of times in the past you know, uh, clients, agencies, we had content from a TV point of view, content from a digital point of view, and now it's really all about convergence and transmedia, and Bravo is a great example of that, and our, you know, the people watching the show would love to hear more about that from you. Sure. Um, I, I think I didn't really quite understand, it really started six years ago, how interactive our audience was. So uh, it was during, I believe, the second season of Project Runway. We just asked people, "Who do you think should win Project Runway?" This was before American Idol, et cetera. And you know, we you know wanted you to text on your phone, you know, to vote. And we had hundreds of thousands of people who responded with no training and just one little snipe on the air. And I realized, wow, we really have an audience built in that really likes to interact and really cares about their content. So basically, what I've learned from these lessons is follow the user. You know. I, they're actually teaching us what we want to do. What I found is that we have this incredibly passionate, tech-savvy audience who really gives us the signals. What I found, I have never, we, we were the first one to combine Facebook and Twitter uh, into a social feed, which now is well known as social TV. We were the first ones to come up with a, a synced co-viewing companion app when the iPad came out. And, and all these things I thought, okay, well, no one's ever done this before, so I'll just try it. And we just threw it out to the audience. The users just adopted it right away. So we have this fantastic audience that's passionate and tech savvy. So I find that I'm really following them versus like we, you know, you have some great visionary, et cetera. So that it just ended up being a great audience. So this sort of evolution of social has really been fascinating because, you know, at first it was just an engagement play. Then now Nielsen has come forth and said it's really helping to drive ratings. Now I think the next evolution is really a transmedia play, and transmedia is defined as storytelling across platforms. So what we're trying to do at Bravo is really use social to drive integration of digital content, and all content, no matter what platform you're on. So for instance, on Top Chef, currently, as the chef testants are eliminated, they go back to find out, oh, well, actually there's a whole other series that's happening only on other platforms, online, on mobile, on tablets, and they're competing to get back on into the show. So suddenly, you can't watch one without watching the other. And I think we're trying to increase the, the value proposition for our users and for our sponsors. So that's interesting because I think the old model was very much in hindsight a forced integration. Yeah. And this really isn't forced at all. It's yeah. really a very natural, holistic convergence between brands and everybody's life, how consumers talk about them, and then obviously making that part of how you develop the content. But also the content on that show, at least as a view when I look at the shows on Broadway, it all feels very spontaneous to me. It doesn't even feel scripted which to me gives it an even added level of authenticity. I think it's all about authenticity because I think fans will smell if it's too forced, if an integration is too manufactured. Right. So I think the reason right. why the Top Chef Transmedia project is working so well is that people really want to, yeah. when they see a fa one of their mm. favorites get booted off, mm. they want to root for their, mm. their fan to get built in, and we built a whole social way mm. that you can root for your fan. And I think it's all about authentic. Right. If it's too much, you know, yeah trying to force a, a, a round head into a, a square peg into a round hole, I think the viewers can sense it. So let me ask you a question. Uh, clearly, Bravo has been pioneering. Obviously, what you've done with digital is very pioneering. Uh, if you were giving advice to the networks right now, because I think uh, they, <laughs> no, no one's asking. <laughs> they struggle with being pioneering, and yeah. also how to really integrate and have that, that transmedia platform. Uh, what would you, I mean, also, because you've worked on news, I mean, what, what advice would you give them 
based on your own experience? Well, I, I don't think it really matters if you're, I mean, we tend to be innovators, but when we feel very comfortable in that space, but not everyone is, and I don't think there's anything wrong with being a fast follower. So I really think it's about thinking about who your users are and how are they going to mm. work with whatever digital initiative mm. you're going to do. So I don't think it's about being first. It's about does this have something meaningful for the person to do. Mm. So if it's, you're just trying to get your an advertiser message across or your message across, it has to be fun. Well, Lisa, this has been great. Uh, clearly, you're a world maker because you're pioneering with a lot of innovation with digital and Bravo. And really, thank you uh, for spending the time on our show. And thank you for joining us on World Makers.